Hello guys and gals, and welcome to another episode of Unique Items. Um, today we're going to be looking at a weapon, which was quite honestly probably one of the worst items in the game, uh, prior to the 2.4 update, which fixed the shapeshifting druid's um, IAS calculations. Before the druid IAS calculations were fixed, I don't think anybody in their right mind ever used this weapon, or probably... Um, even thought about using it, and anybody who did put it on probably took it off very quickly because they realized it just wasn't really worth using. However, it probably saw some limited use just simply because it has plus two to skills, and if you were a druid, like an elemental druid or something, or a summoning druid, and you just needed some plus to skills, um, it could come in handy as a plus two to skill item. Um, other than that, though, like as an actual melee weapon used in actual melee combat, it just didn't really see a lot of use. Now, um, after the 2.4 patch, it's a little bit more interesting than it was before. It's definitely not hot garbage like it was before. It may still be garbage, but it's just not hot garbage. Um, let's talk about it together, and let's upgrade it, and let's have some fun playing around with this weapon just to kind of see what it can do. Uh, so right off the bat, you'll notice that it's 37 to 110 damage with level 43, uh, with a strength requirement of 85, which is not bad. Uh, the damage require damage on it at level 43 is okay. It could be better, but it's not bad. Um, we also have uh, plus two to skills on this, uh, which is definitely nice for any druid that might want to use it, and it's probably one of its main redeeming factors. Um, however, it is a relatively slow weapon, and it has no increased attack speed, which has always boggled my mind with this particular item because it's just like... Okay, why give a item specifically to a druid that you know needs increased attack speed, but then don't put any increased attack speed on it, and put it in an extremely slow base? On top of the fact that it has no IS, it's also a one-handed weapon, and druids have a attack speed increase with two-handed weapons. So they gave druids this nice two-handed attack speed increase. They set them up so they required increased attack speed, and then gave them a one-handed weapon with no increased attack speed. It, it didn't make any sense. Um, we also have 190% enhanced damage on here, which does vary from 170 to 190%. And uh, we have 25% chance of crushing blow, uh, which is uh, it's pretty nice. I mean, for a melee weapon, crushing blow is always nice to have. 25% isn't an amazing amount, but it could be stacked with other items to increase that to a much more uh, agreeable level. Uh, especially if you use something like Goblin Toes, so yeah, you'd be at 50% relatively quickly. Uh, we also have plus one Fury and plus one Maul. So it's obvious that they intended this for a Shapeshifter Druid because not only do we have plus two to skills, uh, but we also have plus one Fury and plus one Maul, which specifically points it directly at a uh, Shapeshifter Druid who is using either Fury or Maul. So either a Bear, bear Druid or a uh, shapeshifting werewolf, uh, one or the other. Now, plus one to that particular skill isn't really, like, a huge amount. Um, it's, like, meh. Um, it's, it's decent, but it's not, like, something, like, to write home about. Uh, we also have plus 50 defense versus missile, which isn't really a huge amount, even at level 43. And then we have plus 10 to all attributes. Now, plus 10 to all attributes is actually kind of nice, especially at level 43. I mean, you get plus 10 strength, plus 10 dex, plus 10 vitality, and plus 10 energy, which is a pretty healthy amount of mana, life, uh, attack rating, block chance, defense, and off-weapon ED uh, for strength. I mean, it's a nice little healthy bonus of just about everything that you might want on a character. And, uh, I mean, it's interesting. Now, after 2.4, and you can finally use off-weapon IAS sources, this weapon might see a little bit of use. And maybe socketed with a Shale Rune, it could actually do fairly well on a Shapeshifter, uh, Bear, or Werewolf. Um, I'm not really sure it's better than other choices, but if you were a solo self-found uh, druid, I could see utilizing this over some other options, uh, just simply because it's pointed directly at your kind of character. And on top of that, it is also, you know, just generally um, good in certain ways. However, if you didn't have a lot of increased attack speed equipment, like you didn't have a nice 20% IAS gloves, or maybe like uh, an armor with 20%, like maybe like a twitch throw with like a 15% IAS jewel in it or something, 
Um, if you were lacking IAS sources, this might be too slow to use on a Shapeshifter Druid because at a normal attack speed with no increased attack speed, no socket, no, um, you know, shale rune or anything like that, um, it wouldn't be, like, super amazing as far as attack speed concerned. And, and you would probably take it off because it would be too slow. Uh, we also have the ethereal version, which could be utilized just simply for the plus two skills. Um, it's not, like, super duper crazy. Um, I mean, plus two skills is going to be useful on just about anybody who just needs skills and nothing else and doesn't have something like a uh, um, a spirit sword yet or, or anything else that they could rely on. Uh, it does have 55 to 165 damage and 75 strength with level 43. And... Um, I mean, it's it's a little bit better, but you can't really utilize it because the ethereal nature of it kind of prevents that. Now, you could potentially use this on, like, a Blade Fury Sin and burn the, um, the Crushing Blow, um, but it's not really, like, super-duper amazing. Um, I mean, I could see using it on a Blade Fury Sin early level if you were, like, a solo self-found Blade Fury Sin, but, like, it's solo self-found Blade Fury Sins are not really a thing. Like, most people just, like, collect the equipment for that character and build them later. So I don't know. Now, let's take a look and see how it upgrades, and uh, and we'll get a better idea of what it looks like as an Elite version. So the Isle Strike Twin Axe is going to upgrade to the Eden Axe uh, from 37 to 110, 85 strength, level 43. To 95 to 191, 45 dex, 145 strength, level 59. Uh, that's actually not a bad upgrade at all. At level 59, it could actually be useful with 95 to 191 and could act as a stopgap weapon until you reach Hell Difficulty um, and you end up getting something better. That's actually not bad. Uh, the Ethereal version, of course, unfortunately would not be able to get used at level 59. You'd have to socket a Zod root into it, and um, it's not really going to be useful probably, but let's check it out anyway. So 55 to 165 damage, uh, 75 strength, uh, level 43. To 142 to 287 damage, uh, 35 strength, 130, or 35 dex, 135 strength, level 59. Um, it's actually not bad damage in its ethereal form. And I'm looking at this, and I'm basically seeing a level 59 Blade Fury Sin weapon. That's what I'm saying. Um, I've looked at, at like an F death, and uh, let me compare to an F death real quick. Um, F death D2. So an F death D uh, weapon, uh, we, we need an Etten Axe, Etten Axe, uh, which is actually one of the best weapons for a Blade Fury Sin, believe it or not. Um, is 245 to 495 damage, but it's level. Uh, 55? Okay, it's level 55, which is actually higher, a uh, lower level than the uh, Isle Strike. However, it could be insanely hard to get your hands on a Vex and a Gull Rune early on. So, um, I could see this as like an early stopgap weapon until you get yourself a Death Etnax on a Blade Fury Sin. Uh, maybe not the character that it was originally pointed at, but the Ethereal version has pretty decent damage. It has Crushing Blow. Um, and it does have plus 10 all attributes. You could socket it with something like an ED jewel to make it a little bit higher. Uh, ruby jewels are not that rare. If you find a 40% ruby jewel, that would be a very easy socket into here. Increase the damage a little bit further, um, and it could very easily carry you through Nightmare Difficulty into Hell. Uh, that's very interesting. However, to upgrade it to the Etnax, you need a Lum and a Pull Rune. And um, that also may be very difficult to come by. Maybe not as difficult as a Vex and a Gull Rune that you need to make your Death Etnax, but definitely a lot um, more difficult specifically for like a solo self-found character or something like that. Um, I just can't see specifically choosing this over other choices. Like if I was twinking out a Blade Fury Sin. Um, I probably wouldn't pick this item. However, if I was leveling up a Blade Fury Sin and I found this item in its ethereal form, I could see using it. But um, but other than that, like it's really just kind of like a stopgap weapon for a druid. And, uh, and even then, most druids are running two-handed weapons, so you're probably not going to utilize this on a druid. Um, a, the Crushing Blow is nice. The stats are nice. The plus two to skills is nice. I mean, there are a lot of nice stats on it, but it's just not fast enough. It's just not a fast enough weapon in general 
for a shape shifter. And um, I think that's really what it comes down to is that when you put this on a druid, on a shapeshifter druid, and you realize how slow it is, you're probably not going to want to use it. Um, let me go real quick over to Silo's Pen and let's see where potentially you could find yourself an Owl Strike if you want to get your hands on one. And um, I don't know. All right, so let's do about 100% magic find, or actually, let's do 150. That seems about fair. Uh, so we are looking at normal Bale can actually drop this. That's interesting. Um, one in 794. Um, you know, if you did find this at the beginning of Nightmare Difficulty, it might actually come in handy um, up until a certain point where you replaced it with something better. Um... I really have a lot of good options here. Let me just restrict this to normal real quick. So it's only Bale in normal. And then in Nightmare Difficulty, it uh, does drop from Mephisto, Diablo, Bale, Duriel. And is Andariel really not on the list? So Bale is on the list in normal difficulty, but not Nightmare and Dariel? That seems kind of strange. Um, very strange. And then uh, let's take a look at uh, Super Uniques real quick in Nightmare Difficulty. Or actually, you know what? Let's real quick take a look at Normal Difficulty. I doubt there's any. Uh, so just Neolithac, pretty high chance, 1 in 63,000. Good luck. Uh, so Cow King in Nightmare, 1 in 2,587. Fire Eye, one in 8,000, and it just kind of gets worse from there. Storm Tree. I mean, quite honestly, it looks like Normal Bale might be your best bet at getting this item. And I hate to say that because Normal Bale is a little bit difficult to farm because of the waves. And it does take a little while to kill him. But the drop chances on a lot of these monsters are pretty garbage. And, um, and they're also much higher level than when you would actually want to get your hands on the weapon, which is a big issue. So if you're actually trying to get your hands on this weapon, like, on level at level 43 when you would want to use it, um, you would want it before you start rolling through Nightmare Difficulty, not by the time you get to, like, Mephisto and it's no longer useful to you. Um, so I, it kind of seems like normal bail is the is your best bet there. Like you see if you can find it while you're doing your normal exp bail runs, and uh, you know if you find it during your normal exp bail runs, then okay. But if you don't, there's probably very little chance you're going to find it in nightmare um, until a point where it's no longer useful to you. Um, Andy doesn't drop it, which is weird. Uh, that's that's a first for me. That's the first time I've seen normal bail drop something, but Andy doesn't. So I don't know if maybe it's a bug in Silas Pen's system, but uh, norm but Nightmare Andy doesn't apparently drop the item. Um, that's pretty much it for this item. I don't really think there's much more to talk about. As always, I do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos, even when we're talking about a really garbage item from the past, which may have been slightly upgraded from hot garbage to mild garbage. And as anyway, as always, uh, if you want to keep watching. Hit that subscribe button.